Hello, in this Wago tutorial, we will show you different ways to import data into SmartScript. As a first example, we have prepared an Excel file in which we have created the labeling data for a terminal block. We want to work with two headings, header 1 and header 2, and assign the corresponding terminal designations to the individual terminals. We will also be using three different types of terminal with different widths, which we will specify in this column. Wherever an end plate is to be fitted, we have simply inserted the width of the end plate, 0.8 mm without reference. In SmartScript, we create a new project with the label 209110, which we want to label with the data from the Excel file. In the Insert menu, we find the Import button, which we use to open the Data Import window. The first thing we do is browse for our source file the Excel file with the terminal designations. From the drop-down menu at the bottom, we select the correct spreadsheet and we see our table of terminal names. The first row contains the column names, which we do not want to print, so we can hide them by ticking first row is header. In the next window, layout design, we define the layout. We have two headings and specify this under number of headings. Here we can select the position of the headers. For example, if the terminal strip is mounted at the top of the cabinet, it often looks better if the headers are below the individual terminal names. The number of levels indicates how many levels are to be created in addition to the headers. In our case, it is one, but it is helpful to be able to create an extra level here, for example, for double deck terminals. In the two areas, marking order and terminal block marking rotation, we can adjust the alignment and sequence of the text if, for example, the terminal block is installed vertically. In the next window, Data Import, we assign the data to the previously created layout. To do this, we select Header 1 and click in the header of column B, where Header 1 is located, and Header 2 is then in column C. The terminal width is an optional field. If it is left blank, the default settings will be used, which we can define below. If we are using a cutter, we can select different options for the cut marks here. For example, as shown here at the end of the printout. At the bottom, we can now import the data into our project. If there are already labels in the project, we can choose to add the new dataset at the beginning or at the end, and the strip will be labeled. The end panels and crop mark are inserted, and the different clamp widths are also visible. In the next example, we want to create individual 60 mm sections with different MAC addresses from the continuous marking strip we have in an Excel or CSV file. To do this, we will create a new project, this time using the project wizard. We would also find the 2009-110 label strip in the terminal block labeling, but we will search for it directly in the entire catalog and select it. Now, tick the box next to divide material into sections enter the desired length of the sections and create a new project. In the Insert menu, we open the Import window with Import and select our source file. The MAC addresses are listed in the MAC address worksheet, followed by the production date and a column with the MAC address and production date. Again, the first row in the header should disappear and we move on to the Data Import window. First, we want to display the MAC address and production date as text. To do this, we create four text boxes and remove the frames in the Home menu. We use two text boxes for headings. Then, we select the text box where we want the MAC addresses to be written. We select the column with the MAC addresses in the table and click on Map Data. We do the same with the date text box and the corresponding table column. We also want to display the MAC address and date as a QR code. To do this, open the barcode window from the Insert menu using the barcode button. Select the QR code and paste it, still without content. Click on the Import button to return to the data import, select the QR code and the MAC addresses in the table and map the data. As we always need two tags with the MAC address, one for the front of the device and one for the side of the device, we have created an extra column in the table 
with the required number. In our case, 2. When we click Import at the beginning or end, the strip is labeled with all the MAC addresses, the production date and the QR code, each of which is duplicated. The crop marks are also set, but need to be enabled in the project properties if a cutter is used. Previously, a data series was mapped to a field and then imported. However, it is also possible to import data directly and distribute it across multiple fields. This is demonstrated here using the small 210s 805 labels that are often used for equipment identification labels. To do this, we create a new project with the 210 805 labels and select the table with the equipment identification labels in the import window. In the data import window, we now switch to the direct transfer view. First, we need to make sure that both label fields are selected in the project window, otherwise only one side will be labeled. If only one field is selected, you can simply select the second field by holding down control and left clicking. There are several ways to arrange the equipment identification on the labels. The source data is always extracted line by line from left to right and sorted according to the selected option. In this case, it is recommended to sort from left to right first and then from top to bottom. Now just paste at the end and the labels are labeled and ready to print. Finally, we will show you another common application, the type plate. The template for the type plate is already available as a smart script project, so we'll open it directly from the file browser and change the working direction to vertical so that we don't have to hold our heads at an angle all the time. In the data import window, we select the table containing the values to be labeled as the source file. We assign the data to the appropriate fields and click Import to obtain the finished labels, which are now ready to print. This concludes the Smart Script Data Import tutorial. Please use the title markers to jump to the relevant sections. Please give us a thumbs up and contact the Wago support if you have any questions.